Good morning, it's Grace here on Books and Cooks, and I'm coming to you on the last day of the middle grade Magic Readathon to do um, kind of like a mid-month check-in video based on when it's going to come out on my channel, but it's basically a check-in for the readathons I'm participating in this month and to kind of update you on some of my reading. So, so far in September, I haven't been reading nearly as much as I was in August, which I think is very reasonable because there's a lot of other stuff going on uh, in my general life that I'm sort of that's kicking into gear, I would say, this month and probably the month of October. So I'm trying to manage my expectations for how much I can read and what kinds of things I want to fit into my reading. But luckily, this month of September did start out with the Middle Grade Magic Readathon, um, which is just fantastic. It's so much fun to take part in this and I really appreciate all of the hosts for this readathon. There are a whole bunch of them, but I know for sure that um, I watched videos by Kara at Wild Book Garden and Olivia at Olivia's Catastrophe, I, th I think is the channel name. Um, in fact, I did some reading sprints the other day on Olivia's channel that were really fun to take part in for this readathon. So I appreciate everyone who whose work went into this readathon and thank them for hosting it. Readathons are so much fun for me. So since today is the last day of the readathon, I might read a little bit more today. It's a Sunday, so I probably will but I just wanted to update you on what I've finished so far at this point. So I've succeeded in completing the entire Gaither Sisters trilogy, um, which was such a good way to start the month of reading. These books are so cozy and lovely. So we've got One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia, which I read last year in August and absolutely loved. And so I reread it at the beginning of this month and I loved it just as much, if not more. Um, and then I followed that up last week by reading PSB 11, which is the second book in the series, and then finished it off yesterday by finishing up Gone Crazy in Alabama. And I could not tell you which one of these is my favorite at this point. Honestly, they just got better and better as I read through them. So. I highly recommend to anyone who is interested in middle grade historical fiction or um, you know is looking for more recent historical fiction to read because I feel like we get a lot we get a lot of historical fiction that kind of goes through World War II and then for some reason it kind of just stops and then we treat it like like you know the 60s and 70s 80s and 90s um, and early aughts are not historical at this point <laughs> even though I know that you know people my age those millennials are are pushing back on the idea that the 90s are historical it is for children right now so and the 1960s 70s and 80s are certainly historical for children right now so I think we need more of it but that's kind of like a side tangent I love that these books take place in the late 60s and deal with um political issues and general like life events of that time I guess. So in this first book, I know you've heard me talk about it before, the three Gaither sisters, Delphine, Veneta, and Fern all go to Oakland, California to live with their mother for the summer who they don't really know that well. And she um, puts them in or she encourages them to join in with the Black Panther summer camp. And so they end up spending their summer with Black Panthers and it changes their lives basically like in many ways the relationship with the Black Panthers that they build the things that they go through that summer and the relationship with their mother that they start to build really gives them some confidence and some chutzpah that they take back with them to um, Brooklyn and particularly all of these books are narrated by the eldest daughter Delphine who is um, 10 or 11 going on 12 when we get this book and so that's where the title for PSB 11 comes from because in this book the sisters all go back to um, Herkimer Street to live with their dad and their grandmother his mother um, who goes by Big Ma and they find out that their uncle Darnell who is very young maybe 
you know, 18, 19 years old, is being sent home from Vietnam and um, has been discharged from the military and they don't really know what is going on, what to expect with that. Obviously, lots of people were dying in Vietnam at that point or coming home extremely injured. And you find out in the book um, that Uncle Darnell is actually dealing with drug addiction. And so this book handles um, children dealing with family members who have drug addiction and PTSD from war. Um, it also deals a lot with coming back to their childhood home and Delphine and the other sisters um, pushing back a little bit on some of the rules and constraints of their childhood that came from their grandmother who is, um, I would say has internalized a lot of racism about black people and the way black people should behave. And you find out more about her background and why she may have internalized that in the third book. But in this book, you're dealing with them pushing back against her a little bit and challenging some of her ideas about what it is to be black and also a woman, a black woman particularly. And they also are um, dealing with their dad dating a new woman and kind of like moving on from his relationship with their mother and bringing a different woman into their home and the stress that can come from that, um, as well as different like friendship dynamics at school. So overall, this is just such a fabulous book. Um, there's a subplot where the sisters find out about the Jackson 5 and they all have like these crushes on the Jackson 5 and love their music and wanna go see them and they're saving money to go to their concert. So it's really, I, again, like I, can't, I couldn't tell you which one of these books I loved more because everyone, just continued the same great character work, I would say, and the same excellent discussions as the last. And then the final book um, that I finished yesterday, again, was fantastic and perhaps my favorite of all three. It's Gone Crazy in Alabama. Look at this beautiful cover art. I don't know if it will show up very well on my camera, but it is so beautiful. They got their grandmother, their great grandmother with her tambourine on the porch and these chickens. There's a basset hound or bloodhound. So cute. I love the art for these. So in this installment in this series, the sisters go down to stay in Alabama with their grandmother, Big Ma, who's moved back down to Alabama. Um, they reunite with some of their family in the South and they're learning about their family history and learning about the Jim Crow South and the racism and um, danger that's still very, very present in the South at that time for black people. And so this takes place in the summer of 1969, I believe. Um, and it, they're also watching the moon landing with Apollo 11 and learning about how some of the activism that they learned and and started practicing in california and in new york may not be um as easy to practice for people to practice in the south or as free of danger and so they're they're kind of learning about that so it's really interesting the youngest sister also starts to um have a different relationship with like eating meat in this book so there's some discussion of the youngest child having problems with like eating animals and starting to you know explore being more vegetarian or not eating as many animal products or thinking about the way that animals are treated which is a really interesting component of this book um you get discussion of family like genealogy to to a degree and family history and discussion of like their background. So there are some reveals about their relationship to white enslavers in the South um, and whether they are related to white people as well um, as, as black people in the South, some revelations about that for the kids and some revelations about their family history. There's some stuff in here about a grandfather who had two families kind of going on at the same time and um wasn't you know wasn't really like uh pinned down to one family which 
you know, from my own family history and other people I know, that was actually fairly common <laughs> at that time. So um, it's interesting. I think it's important discussion too, because families aren't all just like black and white cookie cutter, um, you know, very like normal, right? That, that you get in history. There's often a lot of family drama and reasons why people might not get along with each other well and things like that. So I adored this book. Um, I, yeah, I love this series. I think, so these books were all written between, I think the first one was 2011, 2010. So the first one was 2010. The last one was published in 2015. And one thing I will say is there are some things, I mean, you can even say, see in the title, like the word crazy is used frequently. So um, there are some things that haven't aged super well. There's a slur used for Romani people that's kind of like an offhand um, comment in the book. And I think that it is probably very historically accurate <laughs> for how some of those things were used. But if I were reading this to kiddos these days, I might change some of that language myself or at least want to like address that language with them. There's also, um, like I said, there's some discussion of drug addiction within families, um, parents getting remarried or dating new partners and um, sort of the changes in relationship with the old partner because of that, the way that the kids feel as well about their relationship with their parents. Um, there is a discussion of the clan in the last book a little bit. Um, nothing like super violent or dark on page for that, but definitely some discussion of that. So, you know, some, some content warnings for kiddos and some language that I think is a little out of date and offensive at this point that might want to be uh, cleaned up depending on who you're reading it to or at least discussed. So just some thoughts there, but I loved these and I'm so excited to have them on my shelves. Um, and then the last book that I'm going to start is Shadow Academy um, from the Star Wars Young Jedi Knight series. So there's a dark Jedi Brachis, the student Luke Skywalker expelled from his academy, has learned much since he left, enough to master the dark side of the force and enough to establish his own school for training Jedi, the Shadow Academy. So we're going to find out about the Shadow Academy, which is um, training Jedi to use the dark side of the force and I'm sure is going to be set up as the potential um, rival or like conflict generating thing long, long uh, ongoing in these stories. So um, yeah, I'm excited to pick this up. This is by Kevin J. Anderson and Rebecca Moesta and it's the second book in this series and it's relatively short so I might get through a good deal of this today but I don't know what my reading is going to look like today exactly. So then to talk about that's kind of my wrap up for middle grade magic um, which is great and then to talk about the next readathon that I think I will take part in this month um, will be Shiftathon, which is hosted by Sam at Thoughts on Tomes and Matthew at Matthew Sharapa I believe. Um, and Shiftathon is a, like a shifter focused readathon, or at least like paranormal creature, um, you know, urban fantasy style readathon. So there are a couple books that I would like to read and pick up during Shiftathon. One of them I own on ebook, and I bought it last year um, around Halloween, and that's The Lady of Rook's Grave Manor by Catherine Moon. And this is um, definitely a spicier, I think it's an erotic monster romance. <laughs> so probably not everyone's cup of tea, um, but I'm interested to try it out, especially after Ice Planet Barbarians. I'm enjoying things that are like kind of tongue in cheek romance that way. And basically it follows a young woman who um, goes to become a maid at this manor house where there are like paranormal creatures and shifters and, and different monsters that live there and she's sort of like taking care of the home and making sure that they're doing well and um yeah I mean I read there have 
have been honestly a lot of five star ratings for this that I've seen on booktube. People have loved this first book in the series. Um, it ends up being a series so see if it's something that I want to stick with but uh, it's got a reverse harem romance so um, you know you've got basically a woman with a bunch of men <laughs> who are interested in her and they're all living in this manor house and it sounds like an interesting one definitely like a fun one to pick up so that's kind of what I'm going for with um, Shiftathon is some fun hopefully steamy stuff that reminds me of the best seasons of True Blood because now I'm in deep with these really bad seasons of True Blood <laughs> that I just have to kind of wade through to figure out what happens in the story but I'm in the mood for some um, shifter romance plots basically. So then the second book that I think I would like to pick up during this time is Pack of Lies by Charlie Adara and this is a new romance, a new paranormal romance. That I think it's the first paranormal romance that's being published by Karina Adores, which is um, a romance imprint that publishes specifically uh, queer romances. So I am really excited to pick this one up. This is, from my understanding, it's a male-male romance and it's written by an, a male author, which I always look for male-male romances written by men specifically. Um, as much as as I can find them and support them, I think it's important to read male male romances from the perspective of a man. And um, yeah, I am really excited to pick it up. So Pack of Lies, it's about uh, werewolves from my understanding. And the main character is someone who it sounds like has created a home for rebellious werewolves who don't want to be in one pack and then he meets someone who he's gonna fall in love with. So I'm excited for that. I'm not gonna read a ton of it because romances, you already know what the ending is. So in terms of like the plot piece of it, I would like to be surprised. But from my understanding, there's like a mystery element to this. So I think reading a couple of things like that in this upcoming week, starting the 17th and going through the 23rd will be a nice like change of pace and we'll just, you know, bring me some different things to think about. So should be fun. Um, yeah, so that's my readathon kind of mid-month update. I am filming this on September 11th and this is probably not going to go up until like the 20th. So a little bit later in the month, but I do want to thank everyone who has hosted readathons in this month that I've taken part in and I really appreciate it and hope that you all are doing well.